Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Taxi! Taxi! Oh, he went right by me. Hey, taxi! Taxi! Oh, taxi! Yeah, lady? Oh, wonderful, you're empty. Uh, which way you going, lady? Uptown, downtown, east or west? East to Grand Central Station. Well, I was heading uptown. I was going to knock off for the night. Oh, driver, please take me to Grand Central. I'm late for my train. Ladies is always late for their train. But if I'm home late for my dinner, I sure catch it. Oh, it's just a little way. Won't take you long if you hurry. Well, traffic is murder at this hour. Everybody's rushing home. But me, nobody seems to think that I want to go home. Well, too. make up your mind. I can't stand here discussing it with you all day. Well, I can't leave a lady uh, in your condition standing on a corner during the rush hour. I got three kids of my own at home. I know how the missus used to feel when she was about like you, you know. I'm not asking for sympathy. Okay, lady. Hop in. Grand Central it is. Oh, thank you. I'll never forget you for this. Yeah, sure, sure. That's what they all say. The minute you step out of the cab, I'm just another guy with a hat. And, uh, can you hurry? Can I hurry? Lady, I'll do my best. But it ain't easy to hurry when you're going across town at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Is it 4 o'clock already? Hurry! Look, lady, I'll drive you to Grand Central. But I ain't going to climb up the back of the car ahead of me. I'll get you there just as soon as I can. Oh, all right. Only my train's at 4 o'clock and I've got to make it. My husband's going to be on it. Uh -huh. Well, you better make up your mind. Your husband's going to be on it, but you ain't. But the train might leave late. Not a chance. Well, of course there's a chance. Trains are always getting to places late, so it's obvious they leave late, too. Uh-huh. Maybe it'll be just my luck today that the train will be late in leaving. Look, lady, trains leave punctual like husbands. They arrive late like wives. Well, my wife, she ain't never on time, neither. I figure it's got something to do with the fact that ladies are ladies. When you ladies plan your time, why don't you give yourself an extra hour? Then you'll get there punctual. I appreciate your advice. Really, I do. But couldn't you drive a little faster? Lady, I don't want no tickets. Driving a hack in this traffic is tough work. I'm doing my best. I'll get you there just as quick as I can. Is that a deal? I guess it'll have to be. Ah. <gasps> that car in front of us, why did it stop? Red light. Traffic in a big metropolis like this is a very complicated thing, lady. Really? think they'd find a simpler way. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you call up the mayor and give him a suggestion? All I want to do is get to the station. Well, it don't do you no good to get excited. Look, just sit back in the car and relax. Oh, yeah. a lady in your condition shouldn't get excited. It ain't healthy. If you knew my husband, being late for my train is even less healthy. Well, you got a good excuse all prepared? My wife comes out with the most fascinating stories. I don't need to prepare any excuses, thank you. I had an appointment to see somebody, and he kept me waiting half an hour. Sure, sure. I heard that one, too. There's one that my wife especially likes. Worked pretty good, too, until she used it a little too much. Says her watch was slow. I finally took it to the jewelers one day, and it's in perfect condition. I don't have a watch. Hey, that's not a bad excuse in itself. Look, I, I don't like to be rude, but maybe if we talked less and drove a little more, we'd get there faster. Yeah, sure, and if I got up on the sidewalk or drove through a couple of buildings, I'd get there even faster. Oh. Now, look, just down around the corner and we're at Grand Central Station. Oh. Uh, you got your fare already? Then you can hop right out without wasting one precious moment. How much is it? Forty-five cents. Oh, this is wonderful. Look, you pull right up to the sidewalk. Don't bother driving, and then we'll save more time. You're the boss. Here you are. And, uh, here, this is for you. Thank you very much, lady. And I sure do hope your husband won't be too sore. Not a chance. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Hey, lady, lady, like you are, you shouldn't run so fast. It ain't healthy. Mama, 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 here I am. Well, it's about time. I missed my train. Have you been in Eastbrook long? We have been waiting here for you quite some time. Oh, the traffic was terrible in New York. It always is. 
Well, aren't you glad to see me? Delighted. Especially to see you in one piece. Where's David? Getting the car out of the parking lot. Mama, is he furious? Fit to be tied. Oh. I just just remembered I need some toothpaste. I'll step over to the drugstore across the street. Mama, don't leave me. Tell me, was David terribly worried? He only searched the train at Grand Central three times. I wasn't on it. So we noticed. David wanted to get off it and started to jump just as the train was pulling out. Well, he could have broken a leg. I don't think he was thinking of himself at the time, but I dragged him back onto the train. It was enough I'd lost a daughter. I didn't want to lose my son-in-law, too. I feel even worse now, knowing he's been worried. I tried so hard to get to the train on time, but Mr. Varney kept me waiting in his office. Not to sound curious, but what happened with Mr. Varney? Well, this summer theater's going to get along without me, that's all. I'm not to be an actress this season. I'm not surprised. He said I look too much like a prospective mother. A little too much, too little like an ingenue part. I thought as much. That's the trouble with men, Mama. They can't see past their noses. So you haven't told David that's why I went to New York, have you? Not a word. The pleasure's all yours. Maybe I shouldn't tell him now. That, on top of my being late. Maybe I won't ever have to tell him. It's up to you. Then what excuse are you going to give for missing your train? My watch was slow. Only I don't have a watch. There comes David, I... I think I'll go after my toothpaste. Mama, please stay. This is one of those times a husband and wife must be alone together. Meet you at the drugstore. You're a fine mother. Don't you think I'll forget this? Hello, David. Hello. You idiot. Do you realize you could have gotten killed jumping off a moving train? Do you want to make me a widow before I'm even a mother? Is that all you have to say for yourself? I took the next train. So I see. You're furious with me, and I don't blame you. Not at all. Oh, yes, you are. I can see your jaw working. Where did Mother go? To buy some toothpaste like a coward. Is she coming back? No, we'll meet her at the drugstore. David, don't change the subject. Please tell me you're furious, and let's get it over with. I've pulled the car up over to the curb. You ready? I'm not going to move a step until you wring my neck. What happened to you? Well, I... I I was... Nothing happened to me. I was just late, that's all. That's all. And there's no use discussing it. Oh, darling, don't be like that. Like what? Well, say something. Anything. At least tell me you're worried about me. That you thought I was hurt by a taxi or fell down a flight of stairs. Anything. Well, what do you think I was thinking? Then you were worried. Of course I was, with you running around New York all day alone. I wasn't alone. I was with Mama. Mama made the train. Well, at least I was with Mama until I was late. You're feeling all right? You you didn't get faint or anything? Of course not, darling. I'm fine. Except I'm miserable. This is this is the last time. The last time I'm going to let you go to New York. Crossing the streets in traffic. and You, you never look at the light. You're pushing around in mobs. From, from now on, you stay up at the farm, you hear? Of course I hear you. You don't have to shout. I'm not shouting. You act as if I didn't have the brains to walk down the street by myself. Well, you haven't. I don't think you're happy to see me. Are you? You look tired. The minute you get home, you get to bed. Whatever you say, darling. Now, come along. I I left the motor running in the car. Oh, David, if you ever missed a train, I'd never forgive you. I'd worry so. Now we won't discuss it anymore. It's a closed book. I should have had more sense in the first place. It's not your fault. I who insisted on going into town. Well, I'm responsible for you. Did you have a good day? Not bad. I had the funniest taxi driver. He kept telling me not to hurry. His wife's always late places, too. That's a consolation. <laughs> but I suppose that's something a husband has to get used to. Learn to take it in his stride. It's too, just too bad that men have to marry women. Oh, I don't think it's too bad. I think it's nice. I'm glad you were furious and angry and worried. I'd hate you if you weren't. And you must love me an awful lot because I was very angry and very worried. I do love you. An awful lot. Now, get in. Slide over, darling. We'll pick up Mama at the drugstore. And slid over. Oh, it's nice to be back in Eastbrook. It's so green and cool here. I can't wait until we get to the farm. That's good. And I'm glad I'm going to stay there from now on. I'm 
I'm not going to budge. I'm going to be a farmer's wife and nothing else. Nothing else? When your trip to New York was... It'll all work out for the best, darling. I know it will. David, you may not understand what I'm going to say, but sometimes you want to do something, you want something to happen, and it doesn't, and you're disappointed. And then you realize it's much better. Of course. I understand. Well, we're off. David, what's this box on the floor? What box? Where? Here on the floor next to the starter. It's a florist box. Oh, I'd forgotten. Go on, open it. It's for me? Why don't you open it and see? Oh, darling, if you've gone and done something foolish... Open it. I'm opening it. Let me enjoy it. David, it's a beautiful camellia. There's a card in the box. Is there? That's a surprise. What does it say? It says, My favorite actress... My greatest admirer. Ah, what do you know? My favorite actress. Darling, and you knew I went into New York to see about a job. No, I didn't know about it. Not until this afternoon. Jim Varney called your old apartment to ask if he could change your appointment. They gave him my number, but I didn't know where to get a hold of you. It was... You're going to be very disappointed in me. I... Didn't get the job. Oh, for my money, you're still the greatest little actress in the world. For your money, darling, I'd rather be your wife than the greatest actress in any world. When you think of hospitality, you think of a welcoming smile, a look that says, I'm so glad to have you here. A hostess has to feel easygoing and relaxed to convey such an impression. And nothing turns on the welcome smile so easily as the knowledge that there's plenty of Coke on ice. Prepare to greet your guests with ease. Order a case of Coca-Cola from your grocer or pick up a case at your service station today. Say, mister, what happened to the young lady who was going to miss her train? She missed it. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Trains was not designed for ladies. Uh, was her husband sore? Well, yes, but he got over it, presented her with an orchid. You don't say. Heh. I'll have to try that with my wife. Except then she'll she'll never get anywhere on time. <laughs> I see what you mean. I sure do hope if that young lady comes back into town that she'll ride in my cab. I don't think Claudia intends leaving the farm for quite a while. She's really going to live on a farm? Hmm, that's what she says, and I think that tomorrow is sort of going to clinch it. Huh, how come? Well, tomorrow Claudia and David become members of the community. They learn that as far as their neighbors are concerned, they're no longer considered city folks. Ah, that should be quite a story. It is, so listen in tomorrow. I will, I will. Uh, I better get home to the missus now. So long. Goodbye. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.